Excellent. We are live. I don't know if anyone's on yet, so I suppose we'll wait and see if anyone pops in the chat. Absolutely. So in the chat, will it come up in the comments? Is that what it is? Yeah, it should come up in the comments. Gotcha. Which, that's how it happened last time anyway. This is okay. my second live stream, so yeah, I suppose no, we're going to have to wait and see, aren't we? Yeah, I'm not too... Uh, we we sometimes do, Michael handles all the live stream stuff for us. I don't Yeah. I don't know about that. He's the he's the wizard with the live stream and restream all that stuff. So, yeah, I'm going to hop on the YouTube one and see if I can see if it's going live cool. and stuff over here. Yep, looks like it is. Excellent. All right. Yep, so, we got, what I will we still do... have four people watching. So, yeah. Oh, excellent. Hey, well, so, let's go to the page. This is a page I hastily put together. Um, which is going to be what we're breaking into components. It's a very basic, what I've called Mellow. It is a very minimal Trello clone that I'm going to be building. Nice. Me oh, okay. That's it. I was, I didn't get <laughs> yeah. it. I was like, Mellow, what is this? All right. I got you. I got <laughs> yeah. you. It's minimal Trello because Trello's good, but it's, I kind of feel it's a little bit kind of, clunky with all of these cards here there and everywhere and it doesn't feel like it works for me so i thought i'll build something yeah Less camp more more kind of you know more base camp style where you're going into a task and you're moving a task on in the process and you can do it that way Absolutely. so what we've got is um all of these are tasks um when completed, they'll be green. If they're blocked, they will get a exclamation mark. Okay. And if they're it's still in process, they will just be grayed out. So very visual, very easy to quickly spot where you need your attention. Yep. Any subtasks. This will be the status of a task, any comments on it, and who is assigned, basically. And inviting collaborators. So the idea was it's less about um, building teams, more about, okay, I'm going to start this project and I can invite anybody to collaborate inside projects instead of let's create a team and all collaborate as a team. Yeah. So you kind of collaborate on a project basis. So maybe aimed at freelancers, I suppose. Yeah, sure. And so to be clear too on this, like uh, we are not building out functionality of inviting collaborators. We're not going to... No make it so you can see sub comments we're not gonna like actually update statuses or anything like that this is no. literally just concerned with the uh the process of and the code behind breaking this ui down into components laravel blade components specifically yes. right blade components specifically okay. yes so cool. take a what is the ui i will go to that now so this very large file which a lot of people are probably used to seeing so if we scroll down you know, there's there's a lot of things in here for for this one page. Um, so hopefully by the end of it, we can break all of this into components and start to make it look a little bit cleaner. Yeah, absolutely. It was funny. I was uh, this morning. I was sitting on the couch and um, I was just messing around with a couple things. And um, my my son came down a little bit early. He's like, "What are you What are you working on?" I was like, "Components." And he's like, "Oh, can I see?" So I showed him. It has a really simple example. I was looking at your avatar. Um, oh yeah, avatar sort of over on the side, and we I showed him how to do. It. I was surprised it kept his attention. I feel like the last time I've tried to show him anything code was maybe a couple of years ago. He's ten now, so uh, that was kind of fun, right? But um, yeah, he's getting to the age where he can kind of be interested by it a bit more instead of oh, it's just. My my kids just think I just type on my computer all day. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and it was it's funny like, because like I was able concepts. to show him. Yeah, I was able to show him like the code, like what basically all the, the what we have here, right? I was like, okay, so this is what we're starting yeah. with, right? He's like, oh, what? I don't. Even, that doesn't make any sense at all. And then when we were done, probably spent like ten minutes. It was like, okay, and this is what it would look like when I'm done. Like, oh, you can totally read that because it was like x dash avatar, and then it was like a name, um, yeah. email, and then image, right? And so. You know, very simple uh, concept where to go from like that, this a bunch of code to uh, a very simple component. And that's obviously the goal. goal. Um, yeah. Definitely. Are you hearing that? Uh, is it? Yeah. Right. I was going to ask the same thing, Steve. Yeah. But... What, what, issue, what issues are you seeing there? Sure. Sure. So um, 
Oh, you know what? Actually, I kind of see it on here too. Is it looks like the right hand side of your screen is sort of not synced with the left hands, but it, it catches up. It's no big deal. It looks like it's anyway, fine. If now. I minimize the screen, is that a bit better? Ooh, wow. Yeah. I'm seeing that on the relay there. Don't know if there's any sort of uh, setting. Yeah, probably just a little bit of lag or something, but it'll, yeah. it'll, clear, up. Um, it'll clear up. It doesn't have any information on how I can. I think next time I might have to try. Um, OBS instead. Oh, gotcha. OBS, I never had any issues. I hope it's not memory lag. It is uh, 16 gig M1. So. Oh, nice. You got okay. the M1. Oh, yeah, I, I went for it. It's a <laughs> Mac Mini, though. So. Okay, that's good. Yeah. Whether... Got a couple friends with those. They really like them, too. Yeah, no, it's great. I, Because I, I was on Windows PC before, which is mostly, mostly used WSL2 for. So switching to Mac Mini, I could keep all of. In my screens, keyboards, everything, same setup. Yeah. So, makes sense. Components. So, what's your, uh, what's your, so I've, I've recently, uh, I, I've used Blade components for like one project. Um, to, uh, sort of like from the start, I was like, I'm going to use Blade components to get this done. Uh, now I've used them yeah. sort of sprinkled in around other places too. Um, but, I started that project with the idea that I was going to use blade components. So I'm curious, like for you, um, you know, you didn't start with like a design necessarily. You sort of just started coding this out. It feels like, or it looks like, um, yeah. or did you sketch it up in advance? No, no, this is just kind of okay. code and go. Yeah. So, so I'm interested to know, like for you, what your process is, or if we just kind of want to discover it along the way, I can tell you sort of what yeah. my process was about how I decided to sort of start um, with where I wanted to break up these pieces. And for me, yeah. uh, it seems easier to sort of look at the design and sort of uh, isolate the different pieces that I see in common around the UI and then uh, well, attempt to break out those pieces. Do you want to share oh, yeah. your screen so you can take it free? Let me... Uh... Sure. You know what? Actually, I would... So here's what I'll say. I'm on like a massive monitor right now, so I'm not sure how well that would work. Yeah. But if you want to just share the uh, like the design that you had that you had pulled up before, yeah. I don't know if you were in Safari or whatever you were pulled up in. Yeah. Yes. So, so um, for me, when I'm looking at these, I'm kind of trying to isolate, like what are the component pieces that I want to break out and what are the things that yeah. I want to um, start with? So for like, you can go really, really granular, right? I mean, you can get yeah. super small. Like you can say like, okay, I want to have an icon with text next to it and that's going to be a component. And then you can use that with, you know, you could use that for username, for collaborators, for tasks. Yeah. You could use it for the text inside of that button with this number of subtasks. You could do all that. Yeah. Um, but there's also um, maybe along the right-hand side, you have, like the avatar with the title and the email. And I feel like just to sort of yeah. even start the idea of introducing the concept of components, that might be an easy one to start with. So just yeah, to say, let's definitely. take a look at sort of what that would look like and um, and how you could, could do that one. And then you're yeah. probably going to have bigger elements like uh, a card, right? Um, and you might have some sub elements inside of those, like the status, the sub, the subs, the, the comments and that sort of yeah. stuff. Um, so what do you think about starting with like one of those over on the side? Those like, uh, I don't know if we want to call them like contact cards or what we would even call those on the, on the right yeah. hand side there. Um, yeah, member cards maybe, collaborate cards, contact cards, something yeah. like that, right? It's, it's yeah. some, some form of card. So, I mean, it, if I take you quickly through what I typically do with this. So yeah. my, la my last project I was working on I went to, you know, I used Laravel debug bar. I went to the page and I was like, wow, I'm loading 72 views for this page, but it's all components, lots of little components. So sure. when you kind of, when you, when you deploy Laravel for production, loading those 72 views, it's not actually as bad as it sounds. Um, so what I typically do here is I know throughout the application, I'm going to have common sections. So I'm going to have this main section here, which I don't really want to be one big component, but I'm going to have this header. And what it will be doing is this part will change each aspect of it. I'll have a detail section and I'll have any action sections over here. Uh, so if I go yep. into like a 
task itself, this will change for a task, these parts will change, and maybe I'll have two buttons up there to allow me to move the task on or change the status of a task or something. Um, so I know straight away looking at it, I'm going to have, okay, so this top header is one component. And then I know, okay, so there's another component. Um, and then we're going to have, okay, so buttons, most buttons seem to have an icon with some text next to it. Yeah, mm -hmm. color and border may change. And sometimes there isn't an icon. So I can have a nice simple button component. And then the avatar is another component. And then we can combine that component into a, a kind of a contact card component here. Right. Like a nested component there where you have the avatar yeah. and then you'll have the card as well, right? Yeah, exactly. So it's just about using these components kind of as sensibly as you can, I suppose. Um, for those who are interested, you can actually come and look at the code yourself. Not that one. It is under github.com just Steve King slash mellow for minimal Trello. Um, I did a massive whip uh, commit. That yeah, I saw that. <laughs> <laughs> just a big, I don't, know what, I don't know what to call it. I've just thrown some UI together and chugged it up. So yeah, right. here you go. Whip. First commit. Um, yeah, exactly. <laughs> David, David Hemphill so, would be proud. Yeah, I bet he would be. But if you want to, anyone who's watching wants to have a look, um, it is it's a public repo, so go have a look. If you want to have a look later afterwards to see the difference, um, we can have a look then. So where should we start? Um, so I'm interested with the, um, like with your avatar component, uh, so like, yes. well, I guess it, it really kind of depends, right? Do you, uh, there's, I guess there's a couple different ways to approach it. Like you could approach it from like, I'm going to start with the smallest pieces and go and build my way up. Or I suppose you could start with bigger pieces and kind of work your way, work your way down. Do you have a yes. preference as to which you prefer? Yeah, I, I typically start structurally. So looking at this, I know I'm going to need two main structural components. I need a header and I need a card. Okay. And then what I can put within there, I yeah, I will take the header and I'll pop everything that was in the header into that component. I'll then refactor it so that parts are dynamic and I can put slots in there for actions and start to embed other components. Awesome. So you want to so, do you want to start with like the header component then? Yeah. So if we start with a header, so if we come all the way up to the top, here is our header all the way down there so what we want to do first is just create a nice new component so i think this one would be best to make a full component or will it just be a well what's your preference do you like to go um class-based anonymous <laughs> components or in line so it's sort of like you it's can, options, so right? there's, there's, yeah, there's three types, right? There's, there's class-based. Well, there's actually really only two types. There's class-based and then there's anonymous, but within class-based, you sort of have the secondary one, which is in line where it's like, it doesn't require yep. a separate blade view in order to be able to render the HTML or whatever it is. Right. And so yeah. when you do, um, artisan make component, if you do dash dash in line after the name, it will just kind of do like the here docs syntax. And yeah. uh, and throw that in there. Um, for me, I like think I for think an avatar, that's perfect. Yep. Yeah. Well, even even with Definitely. that, like if you do it that way, uh, and then there's a third option, which is which is anonymous, and, and that's what that does is it doesn't use the class at all. All it does is it literally throws a blade uh, view into the like resources views components directory, and then it looks there yep. if you reference it with x dash and then the name. Um, and I use I use those for things like if I wanted to to simplify something like an avatar, um, but um, but for like a header, like it's probably easiest to just start with a full blown, all the way built up component, right. and then you can okay. delete out the pieces that you don't need. If you don't need a class, then you can just yeah. take out the class, and okay. it doesn't matter. The view will continue to live, and it'll continue to look at it in that location without without needing anything Definitely. else. Definitely. So what I will do, I will shrink my terminal and try and keep everything on the same screen to make it cleaner. Um, so we will start with, we want to make a component. 
Can everyone see this okay? Do I need to make it bigger at all? Looks pretty good. Looks pretty good to me. I did try and make did try to make it larger, even increase my font size. So what I tend to do, I tend to kind of structure quite a lot in the folder. So it's got kind of specific aspects. And what this part is, this part's to do with the site. Um, so mm. I would usually start with a uh, site and then I would put like header because it's going to be common across the entire site, this header. Um, so I'd prefix it with the namespace with site. And then if it was going to be a project, uh, something specific to the project, I'd have a project namespace and then embed it that way. Um, probably my usual overuse of uh, <laughs> the namespaces, structure. to be honest. Yeah. Yeah, that's this nice. I and I here. actually uh I've I've moved them around after I've generated them, but I've not generated them using this. Like um, you know, I think for me I just sort of like jump in and get my hands dirty and then I sort of restructure it as I go. Uh which ends yeah. up being a little bit dirty sometimes because you have to go back through your your blade files and rename them again. Um <laughs> but this works this works excellent. I the the Yeah. Yeah, that works good too. So we component created successfully. So the first thing we were going to want to do, if I just close that terminal because I don't really want it, is let's collapse that header. We'll grab that and we'll just say, okay, so we, this is now going to be x site dot header. Done. So what we've done there is because the first namespace that we're entering is site, anything embedded within there needs to be prefixed with a dot followed by a component name. So if this was embedded even further, you'd you'd end up with lots of embedded things within here, which I've, I've done before. And it starts to get messy, but you can actually use these in the, uh, you can create a service provider to name them, which is quite useful if you start getting a little bit too, too many embedded, which I've done before where, I create a service provider and just kind of name my components within there. So Laravel knows to when it sees this tag to load this component. So if you do start having lots of lots and lots of little blade components, it's useful to be able to just flip between it that way and just give them structural names which people are going to understand when going through the code. Gotcha. So, so do you mind if we do you mind if we look too at the uh, file structure as well, like in this in the sidebar? Even yeah, yeah, definitely. To show like where. So, so what I'm trying to do is put myself in, and and too, like I'm a, I'm aware of how this works. I'm sure there's going to be stuff that you're going to talk about later, yeah. though, that I might actually need the the help of of figuring that out. So within views, you have components, and then that's where you have, uh, in this case, uh, you have the slash site, site and then header. Now I'm curious, is site. it like? Not better. Is that actually not a subfolder, or is it a subfolder? And VS Code's just doing that, some magic that, yeah, because it's only a got a single one. Okay. Yeah. That's yeah. So, like, as you add done. more subfolders, possibly it would break out into another one, just because. Yeah. Again, I've not used VS Code like a whole go. lot. Yeah. There you go. So now you have site and then header underneath of that, right? So if you yeah. ended up making more sort of like namespaces for your components, they're going to live within there. Uh, and then in addition yeah. to that, you have the class itself, right? The component class itself that was generated, which is, uh, which is in a view. different location. Yep. Yeah. Components. Yeah, views, site. Right. And header. then header. So you kind of have the so two pieces have... that are created for you. You have the header. Um, class that's going to be uh used for it's almost like a little mini controller if you will right yeah and yeah then, it's a very trimmed down controller right right and then you have the view that's getting rendered out as well uh which yeah. in this case is done under resources views components and then the how you have you named yeah. it namespaced it and named it yeah yes so the first thing which i usually do is think about what options i'm going to pass in um but I won't do what I usually do because I think 10 steps ahead when I'm doing these. So what I'll do is I'll take the simple route. I will go straight to header. And what the first thing you'd want to do is pop the code in that you would would have had beforehand. So there, my header code is in. I've removed it from that view and I've simply just moved it to the component now. So if I save this and we go back to, I'm on Safari. If I refresh this, it should look exactly the same. Yeah. There we go. No changes. <laughs> no changes whatsoever, which is what you want, really, when you're starting totally. to refactor into the components. 
Right. So, and at this point, it's basically a glorified include statement, right? So that's that's yeah, kind of where much. it's at. We're like we yeah. where we used to do includes in this, and and now it's um, now you have the ability to make it look a little bit nicer within your blade component by using the x dash prefix and being able to do it that way. Which I I prefer that syntax for sure. Yeah, definitely. So I'm just going to install the debug bar quickly, so it might give people a bit of a better understanding. So if we come to the to views now, so here's the the view that's being loaded. We're just loading uh, the welcome view, which is pulling in a component, which has got the layout app, which comes with Jetstream, and then we've got all of a typical kind of Jetstream stuff because it's just a normal Laravel Jetstream application installed, and away we go. But if you click on this, you can kind of see what params it's got. And I'm pretty sure there was a way you could see timings. I was talking to some uh, Barry on uh, Twitter earlier today about this. Yeah, I and saw that. There, yeah, you can do something where you can actually view how long it takes to load the component, which uh -huh. if we get time for, maybe we can have a look at doing that as well and scroll through Twitter, see if we can find it. So that's the first step done. I've taken a bit of code glorified it into a component and now we want to be able to kind of customize it right would that be your next step or would you move on to yeah, something so, else um no i think i'd stick with it i think i would go go that route like so start start pulling out the pieces extracting the pieces that i want to fill in dynamically and um yeah. and go from there yeah cool so my first step would be to okay so let's go to the class because you know we're going to want to change things like the username, the collaborators tasks, the project, um, and this part here is probably going to be a bit more dynamic. So if we come over to the class itself, the first thing I do, because I am picky, is I, I usually update every single stub in a Laravel project to declare strict types. Um, just a habit of mine. <laughs> so. I'm on PHP 8, so if okay. you're not used to PHP 8, I do apologize, anybody who is watching. But what I typically do here is, okay, so we're going to want to pass in um, the project, basically. But because we haven't actually set any of that up, I will have to pass things in manually. So what we'd have, would have a public attribute being registered, and this would be a string. And we are going to say uh, title for now. So that is going to be the title or within the header. So if I start with that, and if we come back to here, it is now going to complain because we're not passing through the title itself. So if we come back to the our actual view, we can start to pass some of these attributes in. So if we say title, and we can just give it a title. We can pass through the project name. We come back, that problem should disappear. And it there does. Yep. So now we just need to load the attribute, right? Uh, load the variable we're passing in. So instead of that being there, we can just say title. Because it's public, it's automatically being injected into the view. Now, if I'd swap this to protected, I'd have issues with loading it. But if we add them as public properties you you kind of do want to have them as public properties right then yeah, it's every, yeah that's a, this good, is a big yeah. one that bites people when they're first getting started with this though right it's like why is it not pulling through why is it not passing through but that is the reason you got to yeah. have these listed as yeah. public properties yep yep got to be public properties otherwise the view cannot see it just like you do in any other laravel part of the laravel application if you're creating a right. mailable you got to think set things to public. If you're doing a job, you got to set things as public. Otherwise, it's not going to be there when it serializes because it's protected. Yep, you got it. So, so to, to on on the uh, on the other part that you were just talking about, where you said we don't have the rest of it set up. Um, uh, so typically, though, in that instance, what you'd probably do is you'd probably pass in like a project model, right? Yeah. So you would, in yeah. that case, instead of passing in like a string, you'd have like a type ended project uh, and then you'd but pass actually, in. No, because it's a, more, a little bit more general purpose, what I'd probably do is 
this part I would probably just go um because the project will be loaded at this point. I'd probably do something like that where mm -hmm. I'm just well, passing that's true. in the exact variable because I'd want this to be flexible. No, that's a good point. If it was a single use component or all, all within this one part of the application, then maybe I'd you know, if like for example, live wire components, I would probably pass in the model and then split it out within the con within the mount method. But because this is a blade view and I'm not doing anything dynamic, I just want it to be general purpose because it's going to be on every page. Yep, makes sense. So if I just undo those changes, we have the project name. So if we come back, we can see that that is still same project name. Project name, awesome. I am obviously, this is, is one of Caleb's projects, isn't it? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> project X. Yeah, Project X. So the next part of this, I kind of want to split this into two. So we've got this section here, and then we've got this section here. But also we've got this little part under here. So there, there's a few ways you can do that. Um, you can just use the entire content of this as a slot. So you could just kind of close that off there and, you know, pop some HTML within here and just call it a slot like you would in um, in a any other language or framework. Like view, for example, if you were just using slots, you could do it this way. Yeah. Um, but it, for me, it feels like it's defeating the point in these examples. So what I typically do here is let's move that back. Uh, Chris, yes, you can. Uh, yeah, you can kind of prefix it with a, a dot if you're going to pass in something like that. But for me, it always right. kind of that throws me off when it when when you do that. To be honest, like if it's um, if it's not a like a string or an integer or something like that, then do it this way because i i've had issues in the past where i've done this and passed through an array or i've done it the other way and passed through an array and it, it just doesn't line up properly and i have to go back and i've got to change it if it's a um if it's like a string or an integer or a boolean one of the more basic types in php then um i would i would just lean on kind of echoing it out into that as an attribute Keep going forward. There we go. So if I was to pass in, say, um, like a, a Boolean, I would pass it in like this. But if I was going to pass in an array, I would probably do something like, um, I'd probably do something like that. Because I've tried passing an array in this way before, and I always have issues. So if I if I was to pass in something that's more than just a more primitive type of uh, string, boolean, or integer or something, then I would use the dot notation beforehand. And another thing to note is if you are going, if it's a word that's going to have more than one usual word. So I'll give you an example. So um, project collaborators, for example. You would type it in this way. And let's say we've got 12 collaborators. So what you'd do is when you're pulling this in here, I'm just going to do strings for now because there's not actually any data. You That's um, camel case there, I believe. Is that camel case? Uh, that's or snake kebab saying... case. Uh, as far as what you're going to put it in here. Yeah. Right. This is, oh man, the, yeah, the one that you had in the yeah. blade, it was kebab case. And then this is camel case. Yeah. That's kebab right. case. And this right. is, yeah, I always get those confused. <laughs> it's, it's like, okay, it's either, uh, this way the, or that way. The I, camel's I got like are, the but... humps, right? The hum So it's like the yes. lowercase, uppercase, lowercase. And kebab is uh, like, yes. you're sticking this, uh, you know, like a kebab through all the, with the little dashes in between. Now the naming actually makes sense to me. <laughs> yeah, it's the only way I could do it. Like it's visual, right? It's got to yeah. be like that. 
Exactly. So if you're going to do, if you're going to pass anything through, um, that is more than one word. You kebab case it within your view, but when you're in the component class, you use camel case. Yeah. There we go. So I don't actually want that. I, I was just trying to give an example. Yeah, right. Makes sense. Like, mm -hmm. Yeah. Like, it's another one of those ones that, like those weird sort of like gotchas that you don't learn until yeah. you like make the mistake and then read the documentation and then, Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. Good one. To, good one to note. Definitely. So the next part I want to do within this header here is we have got this part underneath, which is what I'd probably, I'd probably call this a slot here. Uh -huh. um, yeah. So what I, pr I usually do, I don't know if you do it this way, but I usually do an, is set at this point and we say okay it's set and i'd probably call this meta and that is when i would just kind of dump out the meta as the the slot name as it were and it's set yes so what i would do i would grab that And then if we have anything to pass through, it should display it underneath, which it doesn't. So what I can now do in the view here, I can open this up and I can start doing the uh, slots. So with uh, Laravel Blade Components, there's a really handy X slot um, component which comes with, with uh, Blade Components. But what you can do, you can pass in the name of Meta and within there, that is where I'd put these parts, that meta information from before. And what that would do, this will just tell the component, okay, so I'm going to turn this HTML that you've, or PHP, whatever you've added within this, this slot here, we're going to set that variable to the contents of it so that we're literally just echoing it out there. Yep. Yeah. And again, sort so, of like what you're talking about here with like, um, Sort of, you kind of have to decide ahead of time what what you're making, right? If this is a really general yeah. purpose component, it totally makes sense for this to be a slot. If you know, Definitely. and what you may end up having in here is you may end up saying like, okay, so this is a general purpose header at the top, but these three yeah. things, username, collaborators, and tasks, are always going to end up being together. So what you may end up passing into that slot is something is that's a like a project subheader, something like that, right? Is yeah, a component you, you exactly? Pass the, yeah, you, you can kind of just pass component into component into slots into a component yeah. and you, you can embed it as much as you need to however it makes sense for your project luckily because i created this i kind of understood the the layout as i was going through yeah and then so it's, the it's next... too it's almost like uh you know what you end up with or hopefully what you end up with is like when you're looking through controllers or you're looking through your classes you know the goal is to be able to read kind of what's going on in the controller just by looking at the code, right? And so like we talk about extracting methods. So if you have something that looks somewhat complicated, you can extract a method and give it a name, right? And that's basically Definitely. what we're doing here is that we're taking this, this mess of HTML and we're extracting pieces and naming each one of them. And so it just allows yeah. anybody who comes behind you to kind of find their way, navigate their way through these pages much more easily because it's everything is named. So you have like, you know, um, you know, header page header and then underneath that you're going to have you know project subheader right and then you're just going to be passing yeah. in like number of uh, or like name of user number of collaborators number of whatever exactly. and so um so it, it basically does it just it makes the process of of working with it in the future and your uh fellow dev devs uh, makes their life a lot easier definitely so the next step I've done here is um, I've created a new ISET section, which is going to be for the actions. So if I just remove that now and we can just pop actions within there. So if we need any actions on a page, we can just pass it through in a named slot again. So in this example, we need it. So let me collapse that slot. And we can say, okay, so for the X slot with a name of actions, let's pop that code back in there. So it, it feels like we're kind of, we've moved everything to a component and we're moving things slowly back while we're organizing it. But what we'll probably end up doing is this part here will end up being a project manage button, for example. 
So we might be moving code from here to there and then back again, but we're slowly breaking it up into reusable parts as we go. So it feels like you're not making loads of progress, but on the next page, suddenly you're 10 steps ahead of yourself. So it's, it makes sense, even though it feels slow at times. Yeah, you're doing a lot of the work up front, right? Yeah. Um, yeah, and it's like it's it's sometimes it's hard to know exactly when to do this too because it, it can you know you might you end up in the, in the same traps sometimes that you end up with when we're talking about classes and things like that like premature abstraction yeah. is also a problem yes. you can get into a problem with that too right so if you don't start with like a mm. full page and you just start with like I'm not sure exactly what this design is going to look like yet but I'm going to go ahead and start you know making components when you first start you might find out that you need something that you made too specific near the top of the page and you need it a couple other places, right? So yep. it's, I, I would suggest either saying like full, start with like a full design, like you have like a full design of the page or do what you did, yep. Steve, which is basically code it out, sort of like make it a little bit messy, like red, green refactor, right? Like just yep. get it out there first and then you can take a look at like the whole thing and then break out the pieces that you need. Exactly. It, it's kind of, Ch break it into chunks that you know are gonna that you're gonna reuse you know there, there's no point i think there's a rule of if you use something once you don't refactor if you use it twice don't refactor but on the third time, third time yeah rule that's three. when you want to extract the extraction the rule of three um yeah. i kind of follow the same sort of principle with uh the components as well um the slots completely different, but I know I'm going to have more than three pages. So I know I'm going to need a header component. All of the headers are going to be sure. relatively consistent other than the stuff that you might pass through. So there is that part. So if we come back, we can see that that button is now back. So we split out that header into one component with optional sections. Um, nice and easy it's repeatable and we can customize it on a per page basis um where would you go next jake so um i was going to ask a question about how you're currently doing this so right now you have like the title passed in as a uh uh property right or is it an yes. attribute which one is it on uh that uh, um it is a it's an html is it a property well, but on the on the like when you're talking about like a DOM or like a little like the brackets, um, I don't yeah, remember. Okay. I can't remember. Dom, what, I don't can't remember. Perspective that is an attribute. Attribute. Well, okay. On the class, the class a, that's the right. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. So you're passing that it is like HTML attribute, uh, a, a property on the class, and then you have the two slots. And then what I was looking at in the slots is you have um, the um, like all the padding and almost. I, I'm not sure if you have the alignment or the location of it in the. Yeah. slot or within the component i i didn't i didn't get a close enough look at that um can we hop back to the code and we can look at that real quick yeah sure for the slot let me just chris uh let me answer what are your thoughts on using components for things like just calling a cdn for example x use alpine which would just call the alpine js cdn so i've actually done that before i'm actually doing that on a work project where i'm integrating with mapbox um, it's a tool stack application. And what it does is um, within that component, it loads a CDN script and any JavaScript that's going to be in there. Um, so what it does is it kind of, can I show you on a live stream? I no, I probably probably can't. <laughs> There's probably some NDA that I've signed <laughs> right. that says I can't. Yeah. <laughs> but what you do in your component, you just pull in a script. And what I typically do at that point, I use stacks. So if I come mm -hmm. over to the layout quickly, for example, this is your typical uh, Laravel um, layout, which you get in a brand new Laravel project. And what I typically do down here, there's one in here by default, but what I, I always add a, uh, a stack or, for yeah. scripts. And then I also pass one up here. Um, I create a stack for styles, and then you can create these stacks. And what the components do is if you kind of do a an app push, so in here, for example, I could do a, uh, I could push something to scripts, end the push there, and let's just say I'm going to add a p tag 
same test. What that will do is if this was that does extend the layout, this should now put a P tag at the bottom of the page somewhere. The debug bar's in the way. Oh, debug bar, what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> that is that pesky Z index. Oh, I know. Uh, delete the node. Uh, that's my usual trick. Just delete the node. Here we go. So I've pushed something to the stack now. So it's now appearing after the rest of the content's been rendered where it would usually go in the layout. And it's nice because you can keep that code co-located with the stuff that it yeah. belongs with, right? So uh, exactly. when, you, when you're able to use that push and then keep that right there with the other code that it sort of is, you know, the behavior is sort of with that piece of code, uh, you don't have to worry about like, did I did I push that to the bottom of this page? Or like, does this one particular page need it? Or like, if you remove the component later, do you forget to take it out? It's all like in one component. Yeah. That way it's just, it's nice and neat. Um, yeah, I, I love like, those nice, stacks nice too. Neat functional pieces that you can just go, yep. okay, so here we go. Uh, the only thing you've got to be aware of is if you are using um, like JavaScript and Google Maps and stuff, for example, um, if you've got multiple maps on the same page, yep, that's, that's when true. you can, you know, that's where you've got to think about that component design sometimes because you don't want to load all of these scripts in. And also you, have, like you can have fall into the issue of if you're pushing to the stack, you don't want to uh, add the defer or async tag. Otherwise, you're going to have issues with that JavaScript executing. I found that with Mapbox, I'd usually add a defer on a script tag. Um, I put it inside a component, and then Mapbox wouldn't load because it was executing the JavaScript while the CDN script was being injected. So this, it was pulling the library down while the code was being executed. So the script hadn't loaded yet because yeah. I told it to defer. So it's just about planning these things, I suppose. Yeah, I, I would say like for me, like I, I've done that plenty of times too with like um, X dash, whatever. Like I've I've even used it. So uh, Dries Vince has a really good package out there for blade icons, uh, which Definitely. is excellent, right? But that's like, so one time I didn't want to pull blade icons in for something or it was just before it released. Uh, it's like version yeah. 1.0. And so I just, I, I just made um, some of those anonymous components where you just chuck a uh, chuck a blade file into the um, you know into that location where all the views are stored, and then I just had yeah. like a a namespace of like icons, and then I just named them in there, right? So yeah, I mean, really, yeah. it's the cool thing is you can use it for anything that you that you care to, and uh, I like like yeah. I said earlier, like I like the syntax better of using x dash whatever just to have something named instead of chucking an SVG in there in line. Um, so yeah, yeah I mean, a, exactly you can use it for same. whatever you want. I, I do, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So um, what were we moving on to next? So we Maybe. were talking about before we got before we started that we were talking about whether the the divs surrounding those different pieces, like sort of the sort of like the positioning of your actions or the positioning of your meta, uh, whether you yeah. typically put that inside the component or whether you let the slot handle that. Uh, okay, so typically what I do, if it's structural, so if I'm looking at this, I know that I've got this section here where my mouse is up to about there. I want that to be kind of, that's where the title section is going to be. And this is kind of like my action section because I want them to kind of start stacking like that. Um, so I keep structural elements within the component and then I let, things like uh, the actions or this part down here, uh, how they're laid out, that's dictated by what you put into the slot. Because like you want a consistent padding there. Um, you want consistent margin around it. And you want it to be positioned in the same way all the time. Yep. So I always, well, the way I do it is to kind of style the structure in the component and allow the slot to override if it needs to, like do like a minus minus margin top or anything that you might need to do that way. Yeah, I agree with that. So in the code that we have right now, I'm, I was curious to see if that's what we're doing or if we still need to do that step. Yeah. So we are currently in the header. We are, this part is currently actions, actions. We don't need that anymore. Um, 
this is the actions. So technically, we'd want to move this around the actions, right. wouldn't we? Right, exactly. That's so, That was my yeah. question. I was like, that, that's what I was trying to figure out. I would usually do that. Thanks for pointing it out. Yeah, no problem. <laughs> it's, I mean, it is, so, it's an important point because... Like you said, you want it to be structurally the same whenever you're using it, right? And there, there exactly. is arguments to say like you need to be able to override that because you do. There will be cases where yeah. you need to sort of be able to uh, break out of some of that structure or maybe you need it to be a little bit tighter. But those utilities yeah. with like negative margin allow you to do that pretty easily. So not too bad. So um, this part I'm not too sure because That's, this yeah. bit under here... If that that could change. That you might not want that to be in line. You're always gonna the actions are, the actions is always gonna be a button to to three buttons up here. But this part here, this might be something completely different. That you know doesn't want to be stuck with a flex call, flex flex low when it's small. So at that point, I would keep that structural aspect within the slot to make it easier to override later on. And you can split the difference too. Like you could say like just the margin top, like you could literally keep the margin top and then inside a div inside of that, you could do the flex stuff like like that if yeah. you cared to. But again, it's just really up to your personal preference. Like if you want to have the margin yeah. all taken care of so that when you do have that meta slot that it's got the padding in there all for you or the margin or whatever yeah. all for you, you can do that. Then you just have to worry about the elements inside. But if you want to be able to adjust that really easily, you could just leave it like that too. Stephen, as a Laravel and Laravel Blade noob, I take it the X slot is a tag specific. Yeah, it's it's basically a um, a component that comes with the Blade uh, template engine anyway, so that you can control and inject co uh, HTML within to the components basically without having to set properties. Uh, it's very much like, uh, I believe you've used Vue, haven't you, Stephen? So it's very much like slots within Vue. Um, I don't know if React has got anything similar, but it's a way to kind of, it, it's a slot. It's a component that comes with Blade. Tag placeholders, pretty much. Pretty much it's a placeholder, isn't it? Yeah, you got it. So we've got Okay, so with that, there. yep. That looks pretty good. That should still look the same. Yep, all looking good. So if we cared to, we could then sort of take on that meta if you wanted to. Like you could, you yeah. could further break that out if you if you cared to. Um, Definitely. So what I typically do at this stage is um, this is where some people might shudder. <laughs> <laughs> I like to uh, come to my components here. Um, and okay, so I create an icons directory here. So I know I've got, okay, so there's a user there, group of users and that. So what I tend to use, I use hero icons, icons a lot. Um, so what I'd do, I'd come to the user. I'm going to, I'm going to push a weird, I'm going to push a weird, uh, thing here. So like, um, tomato, tomato, right. Yep. I've always called it Heroicons instead of hero Heroicons, icons. Heroicons. I've always called it Heroicons. I don't know. I'm, I would be curious yeah. as, as a survey on we that. We have to ask Steve, uh, don't we? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Heroicons. I know that's weird. So, it's, here, it's hero icons if you're talking about like a compound word, but Heroicons. I don't know. I always say stuff uh, weird. Heroicons <laughs> sounds cooler, but I always... <laughs> <it doesn't... laughs> right. Yeah, exactly. So what I tend to do when I'm using these icons is I follow the naming convention, what they're called here, so that if I'm, if I'm looking for one, I know what I'm looking for. Um, I've, go, I've gone in the past, like there's uh, the paper airplane. Airplane. I use that for like a send, a send icon. Uh, but instead of calling it send, I will call it paper airplane because I want – Anybody who else, anybody who else comes to the project, and we're like, okay, so let's go on. We know we use heroic ons. Um, let's have a look. Oh, but we. But why is that called paper airplane? Um, just a, a thing I like to do is to try and match the naming to make it a little bit easier. So what I do here, this is just the user. I create a an a. Is this an anonymous one? I, I'd create a component here. Um, right. 
but it wouldn't have a class. It is. This, that's an anonymous component. So this is what I was saying earlier yes. in our chat that we were talking about. I was like, it'd be really nice if somebody PR'd this. So like you could say PHP artisan make component uh, and then you'd call it paper, air, you know, icons, backpack, you know, backslash, backslash, yeah. paper dash airplane or paper airplane uh, in camel case or however you want to call it. And then if you did dash yeah. dash anonymous. And then instead of uh, instead of generating a class and all that, it would just it would just basically just create this the, the blade file. component. Yeah, exactly. It would just basically place it in the directory. That's all it would do. Yeah. Um, with the naming, but it'd be nice because th that is sort of it is a thing. You know, it's in the documentation too. It's it's just um, it'd yeah. be nice to not have to go create it yourself every time. And what I do at this point is uh, just for sanity's sake, is just split these down on a per line basis to make it easier to kind of look at that, you know, where it's ending. Um, and then this part is the only thing that I really need to re replace within there. So this is where I just pass in attributes. Um, so that I can just pass in like class or anything else that I might need to pass in. People still have an issues, are they? At least I am, but it's okay. Like if it's just me, it's not a problem. Um, yeah. But I don't know why. It's just it's. Keep an eye there it, is. I mean, it looks fine now, but like every once in a while, it'll yeah. just like go crazy like that. Okay, so you've got your attributes but, yeah. there, um, so yes. that you can pass in your class and stuff. Okay. Yeah, exactly. And attributes is just a um, a protected part of a blade component, which you, it's something that you can't overwrite because it's just. It, what it will do, it will pull anything that you add that isn't a property, and it will just load it within there. Partial window. Okay, it's I'll just, just keep the moving right my mouse. There you go. There you go. Just kind of paint, <laughs> paint the screen with your mouse. Yeah, you, it looks good right now. So, so there's some interesting there's some interesting stuff around the attributes stuff too, because there's like class merging yeah. and all of that as well. Yes. Um, which is uh, it's interesting. Um, it does get yeah, a bit. Like if, it does get a bit messy sometimes. Yeah, it can do. What I typically do, if it's like an image, for example, I will do uh, attributes merge with a class. I'll set all of the default things that I want on the image, other than the height and the width. So that when I pass in the height and the width, I can control the size, but all of the image, all of the images will all still look the same that I'm using that component for. So with the avatar, for example, sometimes you want them small, sometimes you want them big, but you want them to look the same. That's right. where I do a uh, class merge. Yep. So, so the, I... the the tough part with that, which is not, it's it's not bad. And I don't want to like get too far in the weeds on it either. Yeah. There are some yeah. challenges though. So like if you want to set a default height and width for this SVG, and then you later want to, if you want to override that. Yeah. That's good. that's a bit tough. Um, really, the only yeah. way I've found to do it is with Tailwind's JIT compiler, and you use like the 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 bang in front, like the important. And yeah, um, I've not used the JIT compiler yet, if I'm honest. Um, yeah, it's that's the only way I've found to do it, it to override good. those is because yeah. because like if you have like H dash eight W dash eight for like the SVG, and then later like so, that, and that's your default height for those icons, right? Yeah, and then later you want to say. Unless I specify something other than that, right? And you do h dash twelve w dash dash twelve, it won't yeah. work. It doesn't. It doesn't work. Um, so I will say, in this particular instance, also, uh, Darius does have that blade icons, which solves all those problems for you. Yes, it he, does. He and and it's heroic icons as well, or hero icons as well. Uh, so like if yeah. if this if this portion of the sort of the stream gets like overwhelming literally go to dries vince slash blade dash icons and pull that in and you have yep. all of the heroic cons already lot. made as as blade components for you with all the problems that we're talking about solved so don't let yeah. this be overwhelming this is a pro this is a solved problem but it's worth talking it about is. within the context or, of this. or you can use the uh the blade ui kit where there's so many components there that you could use it is just take your pick right mm -hmm. so I will use the user component now. So that is in the meta. So what we've got, we've got this SVG here for the user. So what we're going to want to do is we're going to go X. It's under icons and it is user. Go away. Um, and then we just close that again. And I could just take this class exactly as it is. Pass it in. 
and delete what was there. So now I should be able to come back to here, make sure you can still see it. So let's paint the screen a little bit. So this icon should remain exactly the same. Yep, looks good. There we go. So that's just a reusable icon now if, if we need it. Um, so the next stage, um, let's go for the user group. I'll quickly fly through some of these. So we're going to have a user group dot blade dot PHP. We'll paste the SVG within there. Let's drop that down to a new line. Make that nice and clean. I've got a thing for making things tidy and organized. Even even when it's like code like this, um, uh -huh. this S SVGs they have to. I, I can't have them on one line. It starts to trigger my OCD a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, collaborators, this is we're going to replace the collaborators now. So we can go x dot i x icons dot user group because it is a group of users, and we are just going to pass in probably the exact same class. So later on, we could probably refactor part of this to move that text grain text SM up to that as that part there to load it in its parent. So we're not repeating that part, but premature optimization. I will wait on that one. Exactly. Um, there you go. Rule three. <laughs> yeah. we're, wait, dang it. We just got I, the I, three. There's three of them. Darn. Darn it. <laughs> so again, that is the same. And then this one, I believe, is a collection. It is. You can tell I've used these icons a few times. Indeed. So I can now create a collection.blades.php. I can drop that in nice and quickly. Scroll across. Let's paint the screen in case anything's going wrong. And just drop these attributes back in. And then I can just replace this part here. So x icons dot collection and that should be all of the icons replaced with components now. There we go. And there we go. Nice and simple. So like, look, yeah, so and looking at the rest of the page, we really only have like one more icon that's used. Well, sorry, no. With the with the big status icons, we have one, two, three. Uh, actually, one, yeah, yeah three, uh, three icons left on the, so on the page. That icon, that icon. And then the little comment icon. And the comment icon. And we've got the send and the pencil as well. So there's a few icons that you could use. And you'd follow the same pattern, right? Um, yes, so exactly. Thing right. I'd probably look to do here is I'd look to replace this meta section here with a component specific to a project. Yeah, right. So if I go... Um, I want to make a component, and this would be projects. Uh, I'd probably just call it projects meta. OK, yeah. Can I stop for some reason? Like part of, it keeps doing that. Uh, let me stop the share, and I will reshare. Share the screen, and we are going to share this one. Is that any better? For the moment, it is. Yeah. Well, I'll let you moment. know if it starts tearing again. Yeah. I, next time, I'm going to use OBS. It's a little bit there easier. Because you, you can't really control the frame rate through StreamYard. Um, I don't know if it's because I'm only on the free plan. Cheers, Nuno. I'm, ha I'm happy to Bye. be the guinea pig. No worries. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> so I'll just call this project meta for now. Um, so I've now created that. Um, and this slot here, we'll just grab all of that and we'll say, so we're going to want to use X projects meta. And let's just drop that in. So if I come back to here, that should disappear. Perfect. So now all I need to do is come over and actually work with that component as well. So I didn't really need this part, this class. 
Um, but I'll keep it for now because eventually I'd probably pass in a project and I'd set mm, yeah. the I'd pull the attributes out that I need. Um, that was an accidental optimization, I'll call it. Um, yeah, so now I mean, when the components projects meta, I can add the code, which has got components within it. I'm curious if instead of like moving on to the other part, like if we wouldn't want to like maybe pause and talk about how you would do that. Like, because we, we've so far, we've basically yeah. talked about extracting the HTML and how that works. But I'm curious, yeah. like, if we wanted to, like, even if we're just writing pseudocode to say, here's what it would look like if you did yeah. want to just drop the project in there and then, you know, um, utilize it that way. That might be a, a cool, um, you know, sort of yeah, like we've already, that. basically, we've already shown the other two types. We've shown, uh, we yeah. maybe haven't shown inline ones, but we've just shown where you do that. But um, you yeah. have really used a whole lot of the class stuff. No. So what I'll do, I'll just show you, I've now moved that to the meta. It's disappeared. The code's now in. We've got the code again. So what I would do, I will quickly do something. Um, have I set up a database? I have not set up a database. So I will quickly set up a database. And we will create a database. We will call this Mellow. Don't need that anymore. I'll just fly through this a little bit quickly because it's just standard Laravel stuff. I'm pretty sure it's just root and root. So now I can come back and migrate. Perfect. So I've got my database connection. So what I'll do quickly is I'll make a, a model called project. I want a migration uh, factor in a cedar. So I'll just load all of those quickly. Perfect. So let's just quickly throw some things into here. It's a project. A project is going to have a, a name. Um, we could literally just probably put the other ones in there too, right? Yeah. Number of project collaborators yeah. and. Um, we'll, we'll say. Um, We'll keep it as a string for now. Keep it simple. Yep, exactly. We'll keep get collaborators in there, and we will say, what was the other part? We have got how many tasks? Tasks, yeah. We'll, yeah. So there we go. Come over to the model. No! I, I cannot, I, I can't no. bring myself to use Guarded none. I'm sorry. Oh, I, I just can't man. do it. Oh, that's a shame. That is a shame. <laughs> this could be a whole. We could have the rest of the stream talking about fillable and guarded. We we probably could do, but I, I can't bring myself to do it. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I just can't. So, so title. I just want this to be some words. I'll say I want four words as a sentence. Um. <laughs> Nuno, Nuno said he's done. He's quitting. He's he you you, <laughs> you made the cardinal sin. You did fillable. It's, oh. it's over. It's over. We will have we will have to have a conversation about that another time. Yeah, have Nuno on uh, to talk about fillable. Yeah, let's do it. Nuno, you're on. Number between. Wait, wait, wait. Richard, guarded none is gross. Between. Come on, man. Where were you? <laughs> Where were you on the Twitter site? You know what? I want um, anywhere between 10 and for layout purposes, we'll do a thousand tasks. Anywhere between that. So now we've got, we don't really need the cedar. So I'll just remove that. We'll come back to here and we will just say project factory and create. Uh, we only really need the one because that is all we're going to use for now. So just quickly close all of those. Ooh. Title, title. Ah. We called it title, right? Title, title, don't call me, don't tell me I've uh, called it name. I Indeed. did. Oh. It's because I'm using uh, 
syllable, not guarded. That's what it is. That's you got that, it. That's, that's exactly it, it. It's the curse. <laughs> so we've got a project now. Um, so now we can just kind of come back to the root here and we will just compact the project and we will just uh, project first because I know I've got one. Usually I wouldn't write code like this. Don't judge me. Um, it's just for we demo have got, purposes. Just for demo purposes. Please, no hate. Um, right, okay. So we've got a project that is now being pulled into the view. So now we can work on the component again. Oh, thanks, Richard, judging me already. Um, so in our welcome here, so what we're going to want to do in this project's meta, we're going to want to pass in the project itself. And we pass it in this way because we're passing in um, a PHP variable, not one of the more simpler types like a string or an int. So we add the colon there and we don't have to echo anything out. So we don't need the curly braces. We can just pop in the, the variable directly. So that will pull the project in. That shouldn't break anything. Good. So now I can come back to project meta, uh, not models, view projects meta. And what we do here is we can, uh, no, I will keep it like that because I don't want the whole project to be pulled in. Otherwise, I would use um, constructor promotion like I usually do in PHP 8. But because I don't want the whole project as a property, I just want to be able to say that this title is project title. I want to say this is project. I should have chosen a simpler name to type. <laughs> and this is where most people would tell me if I was using PHP, PHP Storm, Storm, I exactly. could do this so much quicker. Oh, you really could. Um, you really could. I, I've got PHP Storm. I've got a license for PHP Storm. I just you really like out, GS man. Code. Yeah, you should try it out. And plus, you have an M1 and you have how much memory do you have? 16 gig. Yeah, exactly, man. Like you're never even gonna touch that. Like it's it, it will handle it. Um I was talking to Yaz about this the other day, Yaz Jalad. And uh he was he was like hating on me for using PHP Storm and he was like talking about memory, and I was like, I guess send him a screenshot of my memory usage. I was like like 10 gigs and I had like you know 15 applications open. It's like it's never even comes yeah. close to touching 16 gigs. It's never been a problem for me. And you know, I had like three PHP up the PHP Storm application windows too. So not a problem. Speaking you should try it out. PHP Give it a Storm. shot. Yeah, I, I've got it. I do use it, um, just not that often. Um, speaking of PHP Storm, if anybody in, who's watching wants a PHP Storm license, reach out to me on Twitter. I have a spare one I can give away. So back to it. Oh, unknown property, meta title. Why is that complaining? Is hmm? Did you mean after you can put his project meta title? Hmm. Got a title. Got the project. Does is the? Let's go make sure that the project is coming through with no issues. This is where something like uh, Ray would come in handy. Okay, so that did. doesn't seem to be being pulled through. We are having an issue with loading. So is it when you're passing it through the component that's not that it's not uh, liking it? Like should you do the it's two not array or it there? I, I really need to get a license of array so I can uh, just push things while I'm debugging. So is 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 it available here? The Laravel debug methods that I use. Indeed. It, it's available there. It is available so when it's, there. it's when you're passing it through into the component that it's, it's not like. It's where you're passing it through. So good job we kind of faced this issue. 
Um, do, 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 do. It should be the right way to do it. That's how I would do it, it too. Seem, yeah, it doesn't seem to want to pass it through. I've not called it something silly. There's no spelling mistakes. No issues anymore. Okay. It Google. was a glitch. It was a glitch. glitch. That's it it? Is, yeah, it's loading again. <laughs> there you go. So come back to our component, project meta, what we've got here. So um, yeah, the originally, name. It was, originally his name, we can make it, we can probably make it title, right? Um, so yeah, like we just in, in this case, yeah, in this case, what you would end up doing is this, the username is probably going to be like a relationship or something like that. And you could, you could pull yeah. that in as well, but. Collaborators and tasks. So now that should be loading in. There you go. And so now instead of having to pull each of those off and like specify that in there, you could just have that one component and pass in the project and ta da, yeah. you're done. Very nice. Exactly. Nice, clean, simple. And if you need to refactor or if you want to change anything at all, you can do it quite quickly and easily. Like, um, so let's take tasks, for example, here. Um, so let's grab this. Let's say you want like a warning. So, um, so let's say if tasks are. Oh, yeah, that's a good point. I do this a lot where I work at the moment because I'm using, uh, I built a really crazily complicated uh, pr uh, property development calculator with live wire. And it is absolutely crazy. It took me two weeks to build, but it's got conditional stuff. So if a uh, if the profit gets below a certain percentage, I've got to make the profit value red instead of green. So you know, visually you can see, oh, Okay, I'm going to lose money if I do X, Y, and Z. Yes. But this should now. Perfect. Is this going to work? There we go. So we've got too many tasks. And you could do it. Um, I was going to say that, that uh, this up. could be a cool opportunity, too, to basically. Um, you could either you could either extract that out into a little method that you could do in the component itself, right? We could say like, yeah, exactly. Um, you know, too okay. few tasks or something like that. Yeah. You know, to give it a name, so, and then you could in there you could say is too few tasks instead of having a magic number like fifty floating around in your component. Like, view, yeah, exactly. You, know? you, you can you can start to do methods. You can start to jump into that sort of thing. So, how about we refactor to a method quickly? So, absolutely, um, I think a bigger one. Yeah. So public function, um, too much. So um, let's say, what do we want this to be? You could just have like, if this task Definitely is greater than 50, whatever, right? And then you could just return a Boolean. Yeah. Um, so we basically want to return, um, this tasks. Sure, there you go. Right. We want if if it is, we want it to be red. Otherwise, we want it to be green. Oh, well, there you go. And then what I would do at that point is instead of doing it this way, I would let's just grab that and refactor. We can just say, okay, so let's grab that can say too much and what it'll do it should if i've done it right there we go got to do it the other way around i think yep there we go, there we go. yeah so exactly what we've, what and we've so done there is we've got a, a method which returns a string this could come from config if you wanted it to or it could come from project settings um it could come from anywhere, basically, but it's a method that you can call within your component. 
and you i don't know if it works without the dollar sign i'm pretty sure it needs the dot yeah it needs the dollar sign i thought it said so in the docs so basically if you you can execute things in there you can pass arguments through to it if you need to um it allows you to call a method on your component which can then affect the output of your uh, component and how it's rendered uh, and in this case just the color uh so something that was brought up and maybe so for me i've got to i've got to hop out in about four minutes here five minutes here so yep. i apologize but um so one one thing that was brought up was that if you have if you're using purge to take to take care of this that will not get picked yes. up or you know purge will basically not see those classes as needed and so could end up kicking them out right and so um yeah. actually in the case that we did we actually named the method too much which would actually lend itself to to basically doing what you did before where the statement where you had tasks is less than 50 is just that Boolean value. And then you could do the, yeah. you know, that operator where the question mark and then define the name of the class and then, yeah. call, you know, the name of the class, yeah. uh, which would then take care of that purge problem, right? So you could do it either way. You can, yeah. you know, you construct the, you can either construct the class by returning red and green, or you could just return a Boolean value based on that and yeah. then, uh, you know, construct the class based on the, the result of that Boolean. But in either case, in either case, it doesn't it doesn't yeah. make a difference. It, it works. So, I mean, ways. we we could um, we could refactor that quite quickly to say, okay, so if it is too much, we can say red uh, red or green there, and then what we can do here instead, we can return a boolean, uh, and we can just say just return that instead. Yep. That should do exactly the same thing. So what we've done now, we've gotten around the purge issue by just returning a boolean there, and then I don't know whether this is going to be. This, the so it, this actually doesn't solve the problem necessarily. What you might end up having to do is if you instead of just red or green, if you actually put the text dash red dash four hundred and then text dash green dash four hundred in yeah, there, that, that's that, why would, that would solve the problem. Green. Yeah. Yeah. So we would want to just. Move it back a little bit, but move the kind of the evaluation into the component itself. Right. Yep. So those classes will still be picked up by purge, but this bit isn't hard coded because it's in here, which can be read from a config file. So that will still work and still look exactly the same. It's beautiful. And the nice thing about that too is like, I'm always super wary of ever having those sort of magic strings hanging around, right? Yeah. It's just, they're the things that always get forgotten or left or or whatever. And so a lot of times even, I mean, so in our, cl in our class right now, you have the method that's named too much, which kind of tells you what it is, right? But you could even like, if you cared to put it as like a constant at the top of that method or at the top of that class or I, um, I actually used it um in I usually push these to config. So um uh, so I'd like warning limit fifty. And then what I'd do within here I would just say okay so config for the project uh then we are under projects, warning, limit, and then there we go. We've now pushed it off to config, yep, but you can quite, quite easily push that off to a project setting. Um, I tend to do it this way until I need that kind of the dynamic aspect of the database. Yep, I and agree. Now we've just we factored that problem away quite nice and easily, but we didn't do it straight away. So we refactored to it instead of trying to solve all of the problems at once. We've stepped through it, thought about a problem at each step, and we haven't come into any issues and it's still remaining flexible. We can extend it very easily without having to refactor our code in any way going forward. Yeah, and the, and the good thing too is like, or I guess maybe some of the, you you'll see the benefit of this as you continue to build out the site, right? This particular one, yeah. this particular one that we've that we've refactored here because um, you'll end up putting a lot of work in on the front end and then uh, you'll see the benefit of it. Like you said later, it's basically just snapping Lego pieces together, right? Yeah. It's just like- You're just building. Like it goes building super fast. 
Yeah. So the, this first, this, you know, setting these first pages up does take a little bit longer. Um, but once you've got all the components there, it just, it just goes together really, really fast. Um, and it's a great way to make sure everything stays consistent. So people who would complain about like, um, you know, tailwind classes and like, uh, you know, if I have to rename that, if I had to change that thing, I have to change it all over my code base. These sort of extraction yeah. to components takes care of that problem as well, because you still have Completely. a single location where it's defined. Yeah. And then if you want to change how it looks, you just change the component and that reflects across the entire code base. Right. Uh, so it's just exactly. really changing where it's located. And again, it's sort of that same idea of like co-locating the styling with the piece that it's concerned with, instead of having to have a separate CSS you know, um, sheet over here, and then you have to kind of try and yeah. combine them together. Yeah, less juggling, and yeah, exactly. Being being sensible with components switching. and trying to trying to be yeah as as flexible as possible by starting structurally and moving down into those more fine grained detailed components. You you can you're spotting these things as you're going through because as you split something out structurally, you're starting to spot some patterns even in that one component you just split out. And then you can start to conditionally load in slots and start to pull in components where you need them. And you can you can build your eyes very flexibly, very quickly and with a lot of control. So it's quicker, it's easier sometimes. Yeah, absolutely. So I think we've um I think we've talked about most of the component types and really a lot of the different pieces yes. that you can do with components. Like, so you have the class-based components, you have anonymous components, which require no class. We didn't really touch on the inline components, yeah. which inline. are, you don't need a- I'll quickly yeah. do an inline sure. one. I'll do, I'll do an inline one really quickly. So uh, what we will do, because this is gonna be all over the, all over the site really. So um, we're gonna want a, we'll just say site. You can do the avatar if you avatar. wanted to. Yeah, there you go. Exactly. So inline. Bam. So what we've got now, if I just collapse all of that, we've come down to view components site avatar. If you scroll down, you have this bit. Did, you, did it look like that last time? Can't remember. Um, so Was that not what got... was the question you asked? Did I'm pretty sure it didn't look like this last time I used it, but with yeah. the blade. Yeah. I've literally never used it, so I don't know. Yeah. I've never used it. I, I might mine. be thinking um, Livewire, if I'm completely honest. I've, I've been using Livewire so much that I'm used to seeing Livewire components. So we start the blade there. So this is the HTML that would usually be in a separate file. So if I come back and I just come down to an image like this. What I'll do, I will just grab that and we are going to replace this with a X site avatar. For now, come back. It is that one that's missing. So we can come back to the avatar here and we can pop that in, completely replace it. And now he's back. And yep. then what we can do from here is we can start to pass attributes through to it. So um, let's close some of these that I don't need. So I can say, okay, so we can almost follow the same convention as if we were doing an image. So we can say, okay, so the source is gonna be this. Um, and then the alt is gonna be that. And the class is gonna be that. So if we come back, we can come up to the constructor. We will make these nice and clean. So we know that we're going to have a, a source. We can even set a default in here um, so that if. Oh, sure. Like you've got a fallback. Doing, yeah. Yeah. So you, you can have avatar. like, if that user hasn't got one, you're not going to have to worry at all. Um, then you could do public uh, string alt. You can say user avatar. And then we had the class as well, which is one that we will always want to pass in. We don't want that to be optional, do we? Pass that in there. Although, 
we could just get around that with uh, attributes as well, can't we? But yeah. attributes wouldn't let us do this part here. So what I will do is I won't do the class. The class is the one thing that I won't do. Uh, right, because so then you can just I pass can... it through and use attributes, yeah. Yeah. So, no, so in order say... to do, so this actually brings Ooh. up an interesting point because in order to do that, you have to, in the render function, you have to return a an anonymous function. You have to return like a closure. If you're going to, I think, I think that's how it works, yeah, actually. I've, I've not so like, used the in here, language, I'll actually. I'll, I'm going to share a uh, I'm going to share a piece of documentation here. So um, I'll put it on our private. Actually, I'll just put it in the public chat in case everybody's interested in seeing it. So I yeah, think that you have to. Nice. What's that now? So that's fine. That works. Almost. Oh, there it or is. Do I have to say this? Uh, I'm saying I'm saying specifically context. the attributes on the attributes okay. uh, that you'll have to. I broke it. Yeah, so, so you can't if you use can pass this. SRC and alt like that, right? I think you should be able to use that. So what does that do if you use it right now? So this bit, it doesn't come up with the image for some reason. Hmm. So, ta -da! so you... oh no. <laughs> uh, so let's look for inline. Inline component views. Uh, you've got slots generating them. It doesn't say anything about how you're gonna. So the one that I the one that I had sent to you, uh, the one specific spot I sent you to, um, that shows. So if you click that link again one more time, sorry. Where Where ahead. did you send the link? Sorry. Oh, I put it in the uh, public chat. Well, I'm not seeing it. Or in the comments, I guess that's where it's going to be. It didn't actually show up in the restream one or whatever. It, uh, let me see if I can put that in our private chat. Let's see. Try that. There you it go. Show that up one. for me for some reason. Ah. I'll copy the link because I can't remember what browsers I'm using as default. Oh, okay. So here All we right, go. So right there, you can see like in the render function, if you want to have the attributes or whatever, you have to pass in in that function, right, the, the uh, data, okay. and then you can get to the attributes. Um, okay, so what I need is I need to return a function which accepts the data. Yeah, and, and then, then just, just push that inside there. Yeah. That basically is a string. Mm -hmm. Which, yeah, you can still use the here doc syntax, I think, because uh, it does just return a string anyway, I believe. but. It doesn't matter. Um, you could just. We'll do it that way. We, we'll test. We'll try it out. Um, let's go back to the docs. And then you have to well, use dollar sign data, data, dollar sign data attributes or whatever. Uh, data attribute. Okay. Okay. Now I see where that's going. So let's make sure that's an array. Um, and because I'm Steve, I like to make sure that I'm passing like a string. So I can say. Um, so I don't know if you need it for that, Thank but you need it for the course. attributes and the slots. We'll find out. Yeah, we'll, we'll find out. I'd, I'd assume you would, but oh, wrong page. <laughs> OK, so that is complaining about something down here. Something on this line. Maybe we do have to return it as a string instead of a here docs. Maybe. Let me just grab it and say, whoop. Ooh. Oh boy, this is going to be fun. Oh, <laughs> this was definitely the wrong one to do, wasn't it? No. Those, <laughs> yes, we were so close to wrapping this all up. Then we had to jump into uh, this. We, uh, oh, why did we do it to ourselves? Uh, why? Okay, I don't so know. I have to do it like this. Um, we're going to have to do it like that. And then this bit here is... Okay, so these are the dynamic parts here. This part mm -hmm. and this part. So if we're using t PHP, we can say data source 
this is how I imagine it should work. We we had Nunu in the chat. He works at Laravel. He should know this. Mm -hmm, indeed. Oh, no, still saying no. Unexpected token. Expecting that. Where could it be possibly going wrong? Um, okay, so if I just delete how I'm loading this in for now. Uh, oh, wait. My bad. <laughs> what was it? What okay, so it's still not loading it. Um, so uh, I, I forgot a semicolon. Okay. Uh, so, so maybe pop one of those what? back in. Sure, there you go. What is going on? So let's just scroll down. So is it? So you don't need, well, no, you do. You do need data. To see all and then the attributes. Oh, I yeah. see. Yeah. So, uh, so it is data attributes, is it? Mm -hmm. Go back to that link you sent me. Um, oh, it should be. For, oh, wait, yeah. Data attributes. And Steve, I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to leave you hanging, my friend. That is okay. I I've done this to myself. <laughs> well uh thanks for having me on man i appreciate it yeah i am i am confident i'm gonna watch this back when i uh when i get home a little bit later and i am 100 percent confident yeah. you will have this figured out um i will yeah. i i think i've just solved it so um it, it appears that i can't pass in that default value right now gotcha okay which is fine i'll drop those default values that is fine come back to here and we can say that the source is that and that the alt is user avatar and that the class we're just going to say height of 10 and a width of 10 and oh it's still saying that okay so maybe a problem for later <laughs> <laughs> in any case for all of you who are watching out there if you end up having a really simple component that you want to do in line, you could totally do it. It's possible. It happens, right? It in is that possible. Case, in that Definitely. case, a lot of times for me, like if I'm using something in line like that, I'm just making an anonymous component. You know what I mean? Like I'm just chucking it in a blade yeah. view and like not using a class if I have something that's that simple. But um, I suppose yeah. there are cases where you'd, where you'd need the other. So anyway, hey, thanks again for having me on, man. This was, this was fun. I learned a couple <laughs> new things and uh, it was good getting to hang out with you and chat with you for a little bit. Yeah, definitely. It was, it was good to chat with you too. Good to, to meet you, actually. Yeah, I've been listening you as well. to Laravel News for such a long time. So, yeah, yeah, glad to uh, glad to meet you as well. All right, folks. See ya. Have cool. a great evening. Peace. Cheers, Jake. Bye. Right, I am probably gonna give up with that because that's just saying no to me. Um, the last thing I would do, just because I am stubborn, is to dump out data attributes. I, I probably wouldn't usually do this in line myself. OK, so we've got attributes coming in. So it's not actually attributes we want to pull. He lied to me. I should technically be able to load that through like this then, maybe. Thanks for coming, Grant. It was, hey, I, he's just gone. He's just gone and I've solved it. That is typical, isn't it? So that is how we do it. You, it's accessed on data. It's not on attributes. Attributes, because it's the protected attributes, they will be pulled in through the component automatically. So the properties I'm setting here aren't attributes. So that is why they were not being accessed. Oh, we got there just as he left. So that's how we break it down into some quick components. Uh, before I go for the evening, does anyone have any questions? Anybody at all? Anything that you want me to go over again? Unless you call it attributes in your function signature. I'm pretty sure you're not allowed to. I'm pretty sure it will complain if I pass through something like uh, public array attributes. If I do that, is it going to die on me? Attributes must not be defined. 
Yes, it is protected. You are not allowed to use attributes. I thought so. Worth checking, though. Oh, the closure and render thing. Yes, definitely. So um, what I would need to do here is I need to drop them because they aren't being passed in. What I'd need to do is um, do something like class list equals array merge and then we are going to basically swap all of that now for the class list and we're going to merge in data attributes and we are also going to merge in that i believe that should do it oh my Component attribute bag given. You're kidding me. Okay, so can I just be like super cheeky and cheat while I'm on a screen? A rate of screen combo. No, what are you doing? Okay, so um, what happens if I just kind of dine dump on this? Come back. We are getting an attribute bag which has attributes on it. Can I access that? The tech rabbit hole, you are completely right there. Um, cannot access attributes. Okay, so. I'm not sure where that is coming from. Uh, that is definitely something for another day. Let's just put it back where it was working and end on a very big picture of a face. And we will end there. Cool. Thanks, everyone. And I will see you again soon. I believe my next stream is going to be on building APIs in Laravel. I aim to be doing that maybe next week. So stay tuned on Twitter. Thanks, everyone. And I will see you later.